Hey guys and gals, I got another one for you today. Today we are featuring the Object 705. We're on Scorpion Pass. This is an encounter battle. Get to the flag, defend the flag. I mean, that is the choke point on this map. Now, the spawns are kind of awkward, um, and it kind of wants people to go through the valley and make a valley fight, um, but really protecting the spawn and winning the spawn. You don't have to cap it, but win it and then you're able to control the map unless you push out to anywhere where the zero line or K line can see you in the middle of the map in that case you'll play into their favor and they'll be able to destroy you so what I would do is win the choke put, put a little cap pressure on maybe and then force them to come down off the zero K line and then once they start to move into positions um, catch them with their pants down destroy them uh, B6 is good D5 is good and then if you need to spot E7 is good when you come from D5 if that makes sense and then obviously over here like G Three where those guys are at is a pretty good spot and this is a good one too so we get a nice shot on that medium tank crossing uh, no it's the 705 does not land all its shots like that so let's see what they got our scout goes in doesn't really spot a lot but he does die from their chieftain we it looks like we have two tanks me and another uh, E100 committing to this choke and then we have a heavy behind us a medium next to him and a medium way back in the back probably sniping at e5 i'm guessing anyways we're gonna pop up over here and see what's cooking there's a t32a proto so we get a shot into him he tracks us with this second shot bounce the first one and he does get a penetration on the third one and retracks us with a 75 percent crew that is tragic it's very hard to get shots in you know I mean get hard to get your tracks back on now an opposing 705 is right there the t32a backs far enough up to where I'm able to get a shot into his upper plate and I take a beating for that I'm pretty sure the chieftain up top shot me which is a great counter position to this spot Unfortunately, uh, me and the C100 are not going to fight off this wave of heavy tanks that are about to unfold upon us. And we lost our heavy tank and our medium tank behind us. Um, there still is one medium tank in E2, but you can see he's rotating to the other side. So this is not looking good. We'll just try to get as much damage as we can before we die here. And we are unable to get the shell into the side of the Super Conqueror. So unfortunately it looks like we're going to die. Team is starting to rotate though so hopefully they can make some good positioning. Obviously you can see we sent a ton of stuff down the zero line. They actually have quite a bit on the zero line as well. And you see that it's not really flanking because you're going to be driving right into a headlong battle so it doesn't make much sense. I feel like these heavies are just in no man's land, so I ping them to try to hopefully pay attention and move to a position where they can help the remaining team that is still alive. Um, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So, while this game plays out, feel free to watch it. I'm going to talk about some things that are going on in World of Tanks right now. So, through the 12th, um, if you go to the store, there's some um, boxes of tanks packages of tanks that you can get and they're like 75 I guess 60 to 75 percent off and ones that I think are a sweet deal that you should pick up Painbringer uh, gives you the t32a proto the iron rain the progetto and the French heavy auto loading tank can't think what it's called premium tank uh, at 70 per 70 percent off for like 16,000 gold uh, it's the Nomad Samoa, that's what it is. And <clears throat> it just gives you four different nations premium tanks. 
So if you don't have a lot of premium tanks, that would be a good one. But if you hate auto loaders, it's definitely not a good one for you. Training day is 14,550. That's 75% off. And you're going to get things like the Vengeance, the Holland Hunt, uh, the T3488, the Amex Chappie, which isn't that great, but the Dragon Type 59, the Legion 59, and the Jackal, which I played the Jackal a couple times. I didn't think it was that great. However, these are all training tanks, so you get extra XP for your drivers. And it has a good mix of nations, so you're able to train a lot of drivers if you don't have good training premium tanks. That would be a good one for you to pick up. Um, the other ones are good offers. Those are two that I just think are, if I needed premium tanks, those two that I wouldn't mind getting. Uh, the low is 50% off right now in the store. So if you like making silver, that is a great tank to do it in. And it's 50% off, so you can pick that up. Um, the Sta 2 is one of the deals of the week and that also makes a ton of silver if you like medium so there's a little bit of everything for everyone um, so pick that up and the other funny thing is like I didn't think they'd ever do string theory again since we got these m monthly ops but tomorrow through the 12th they're gonna have a string theory and this tank is um, one of the fastest grinds I've ever done, the Object 705. I can't remember if I used the big gun or the smaller gun, um, but on these replays I'm using the smaller gun because your DPM is so much better, your gun handling is a little bit better. Overall, I just think it's a better gun. I'm pretty sure it's what I used on it. Uh, but anyways, I had a string theory going when I did it and some XP boosters. So I flew through this tank. It was the fastest tier nine grind I've ever had. All right, so that's really all I got for you as far as uh, updates go. So if you need tanks, uh, there's definitely some great deals in there. Black Friday is coming up, so there might be better deals, but these, are, these aren't ones that you can pass up if you need premium tanks, I guess is what I wanna say. The Death from Afar actually is a pretty decent one too with 13,000, 70% off. You get the Rhymatile Scorpion G, the Striker, Kanon and Jagdpanzer, uh, Iron Rain, and the E25. So if you like sniping tanks, those are definitely probably some good ones for you. Um, and this E100 is just playing cleanup now. We're down to our scout tank. It's probably not going to pull off here, but here's what it is. Okay, they had the advantage we were just spread out too far um didn't focus a position and we slowly got picked off as we went through all right so 18 or almost 1900 damage 100 assist 1800 blocked definitely and not very good um, but we do take fifth on the team and looking at their team their team really didn't do that great but they're already did 5000 damage and that's a huge contributor. Uh, the rest of their team was just carried by like their top three guys. And let's see, only 527 XP earned. That's not going to do very well. Alright. <clears throat> so, Object 705. Uh, you you can angle your lower plate, but then you expose your drive wheel, and um, people shooting heat will sometimes not be able to penetrate through, and they'll just break your track. However, to rely on that is not a great idea. Definitely try to find some cover that covers your lower plate and or your drive wheel, so that way if you're angling, um, it makes it tough for them to get a penetrating shot into your drive wheel. Now we're on to Pilsen, and this is my favorite heavy tank map of the game. Um, now, even if you're in a heavy tank, you still need support to win the 1-2-3 line, but that generally is what controls the map. If you lose the 1-2-3 line, you have to work so hard to get back into the city. Um, so, taking the 7-8-9-0, uh, you're working from 
an uphill advantage, which generally is advantageous. However, the way this is laid out, it's flat enough to where the low ground just gives you great hull down positions. So uh, we're going to wait and see if anybody comes through this hole. And we're going to keep an eye on our map. As you can see, there's tons of red down the 890. What a waste of time that is. Um, you can see we spread out and make kind of a cup shape in like G6, J6, H8, whatever, then on the zero line. So those are all crossfires if the Reds want to pull out. Makes it really difficult for them. And then the rest of their team looks like they went on the one line. So uh, we're going to swoop in on their side. Hopefully there isn't anything to our right. Even if there is, we'll take the shell. In the VK 7201K, it's parked right behind his M103. Just shot into him. Looks like he's shooting AG. M103 is going to do some nice side scraping. Congratulations, buddy. I'll let you side scrape. I'm going to avoid your gun. I'm going to kill your VK here, and then we'll deal with you. So you just keep side scraping. Now their TD is starting to come back. I don't want to get shot in the back. So as long as I stay out in front of this IS-4, I should be golden. It doesn't look like... It looks like he's starting to turn around now. You guys are afraid of the 703. Hang on, let me let me take care of that for you. Alright, so now on to this E-100. And we have our heat rounds in. Let's see if we can get a good shot on the E-100. My buddy drove to the right side of him, so I'm going to try to get to the left, and we will see what we can do. I realize, you know what, I think, let's just shoot his track off, pick up some assist damage here. Right off the bat, we get 700 for that. I don't know if this T-57 is trying to block me from getting damage, or, or what, I'm not sure. Alright. You see our heat round is unable to get his lower plate, it kind of was tipped at an awkward angle. So it is what it is. The fox trying to. Oh, he's just trying to survive right now. So we decide to get another tracking shot with the heat shell. And we do. So that really helps us get up to 1500 assist. Legion doesn't survive long enough for us to get another shell in. And it, look at our advance compared to the Reds' advance. They have all moved into H0 and cannot move out of there. Um, because they'll be driving into a big crossfire and we have worked our way through the cover and have made it all the way up into their corner and now we're driving uh, either across the AB line or we can alternatively go back through the 3 line and push the G uh, or we can just go through the Shed of Shame which is in the middle of the map and it has that name for a reason if you go into the Shed of Shame too early chances are you are going to not come back alive. Uh, embarrassing things happen in the Shed of Shame, like quick deaths. Um, things we don't talk about. So don't go to the Shed of Shame until the end of the game. And somehow, some way, they find a way to push through on the K line and they destroy our like six tanks that we had surrounding them. So I don't know if our team tried to push in on them, um, when really they could have just stayed put and forced the Reds into just a really crappy situation. Um, but we're going to open that crossfire back up. We're going to drive over here, and we'll take care of them. Looks like we got a rev. I'm just going to take some shots because the position, map positioning to me is more important than stopping and aiming my shot. Unfortunately, we're unable to hit the rev both times we fire at him and my T-57 Heavy that followed me uh, is able to get the shell out so uh, now they're going back up to their base to defend and you're just unable to work these hills over here so that's another reason why I think it's so stupid to go down the 890 you guys have better reasoning of why the 890 is important you know I'd like to hear it it's okay I guess to counter their 890 push um, but you can see that they really could not do anything against our team until our team what I guess happened is 
push up out of their defensive positions. And that made it really awkward, so. We are up to 1500 damage, which isn't impressive. Um, and we have blocked 2100 damage, and we've assisted for 15, so. Not a terrible game. Definitely wish we could have brawled some heavies a little bit more, but it is what it is. We got a victory at least, that'll help the XP. Let's check out the stats. We're total up to 3,400 damage, 1,700 assisted, 4,000 blocked, and 1,700 XP earned. Not bad at all. Um, even though we've had we had one loss, we checked out early, real early in that first game, um, but not terrible. Hopefully, we can turn around in game three and get the 705 into the playoffs. I really I like this tank. I know a lot of people dislike it, or even the 705A. I think they're absolute monsters. Um, if you just give a little wiggle, people really struggle to pen you reliably. Unless, of course, they have like a gigantic gun, or I mean, like shooting HEs down into the engine deck of this is kind of a weakness. So you want to be prepared for that. Um. But otherwise, if you get it hauled down, this gun is good. Uh, close range, like face hugging people isn't bad. But just be careful if they are taller than you, they can shoot down into your engine deck. So, usually like Germans, you don't want to face hug. Unless the terrain will account for their gun depression into your engine deck, if that makes sense. Alright, so this is an encounter match, and I've made videos about this before. Um, I actually like to push the one line more than the zero line, but since I spawned over here and I'm a heavy tank, it'll take me years to get over there. So I'm just going to push over here and hope that my team goes with me. So far, so good. They are all here, um, and if we can make this push happen, we are going to dominate this game. Now the problem is, the 705 is a little bit slower, and it has a long reload, and it's not very accurate so it's effective DPM is not that great so we're gonna aim and I mean everything is glaring with the 75% crew right like you guys can see that none of these tanks really look amazing um, with their 75% crews but then you start thinking about, you know, getting the mobility skills, getting the repair skills, getting the gun handling skills, getting the vision skills. All those add up and just make tanks way better. So, um, not to mention consumables. Uh, getting good consumables that will help your tank overall will just help you dominate even more. So. Um, once again, we're tracked, and you can see how tragic it is to be tracked with a 75% crew. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to push up to this dead tank, and we're going to try to get shots shots in here while we're covering up so we don't take damage. However, we weren't angled enough for that 50 TP. We shot through a drive wheel, bad angling. Um, however, if I was pointing right at him, I feel like my lower plate was angled up a little bit, so he'd have been shooting right flush into my lower plate. So, unfortunately, the aggression doesn't pay off here. Um, we only pick up 1,300 damage. We do block like 2,500 and get 500 assisted, but I don't think that's going to be enough to get into playoffs. Um, so, th those of you that don't know what string theory is, it's if you win. I think it's five games in a row you're getting a times five xp boost on your tank and as long as you continue to win you'll keep getting that five times boost um so it can make a grind fly um but you have to win games so just note that <clears throat> what we used to do is just platoon up um because platooning you know you limit you really limit the amount of 
terrible teammates that you have. Um, when you have players that you communicate well with, play good with, um, and if you can string some wins together, it definitely helps get a lot of grinds out of the way. So if you're on a crappy grind that you don't like, definitely take advantage of that. Work with your uh, work with your platoon, or even work by yourself to to get it done. Don't give up um, if you if you can't string games together right away. Um, you know it's not bad to get in a tank that you're really comfortable and strong in. Um, get to game three and then jump in the tank that you want to play and see if you can win that one then if you get to string three four which i believe is the one that's times five then you get win that one you get a times five on top of it so um you definitely can get some good things going a lot of xp earned and you don't always have to start with the tank that you're grinding uh, i actually feel like that's somewhat counterproductive because if it's a grind to you you don't enjoy playing the tank that much and if it's a grind to you uh, you know maybe it's not 100% or you don't have all the um, the best gun and the best turret um, you don't have the best packages on the tank so obviously if that's the case or either case you need to grind the XP out and when you chop off a lot of that XP it makes your life a lot easier and makes the game a little bit more enjoyable and it gets you closer to the tank that you're actually trying to get so take advantage of string theory don't give up if you don't win but those first two wins that you string together make sure you're in a tank that you're comfortable with you can um, at least get that string going and then switch over. So how did the 705 turn out? Well, we got 4700 damage, 2100 assist, 6100 blocked, which was nice, on 2600 XP earned. So in that game alone, we did 1300 damage, 500 assists, 2100 blocked, and then 900 XP earned. So um, that's really all I got for you guys. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.